First of all, I'm not Irish. It's another one of those stereotypes. Boston, Irish, Catholic, bigot, living in the projects. Well, that we did do. We did live in the projects. My husband Bob was making $70 a week, and half of that was going to support the children of his first marriage. Yeah, he was divorced, and he was 15 years older than me. He was my school bus driver when he went to high school. Asked for a bite of my Milky Way. Never gave it back. That was the start of our courtship. You can bet my family was delighted to see me marry him. But he was a good man. Good husband, good father, good person. So, there we were, living on $35 a week with our two girls. But remember, this was 1961. $35 went a lot farther than it does now. Our Jack was in the White House. It looked as if our country had turned a corner. I'm not really political, but I believe that. And our Pope, that was Pope John the 23rd at that time, he said we all had to learn to live together. And I believe that too. And Bob believed that. And he was Irish. Well, when you get right down to it, I'm partially Irish too. Mostly French, but I'm partially Irish. Afterwards, they asked, what was a woman doing out on the streets after midnight? They sure let me know they believe there was another man. Well, there was another man. His name was Elvis. Elvis Presley. And he had a brand new movie out. And I had a brand new four-month-old baby. I was still breastfeeding. It was my first time out. OK, choice. Milky Way or Elvis, what would you take? Um, Elvis. Right. <laughs> oh, it drives me wild. Of course, I love him a lot better now that he stopped dancing like a jungle bunny. Oh, see ya. See you next week. Sure. Bye. Bye. Did you learn to do the hula hula? Jerry? I was raped near Kari. A colored. Oh, God. Jesus. 
Daddy, Mommy showed up in the bathroom. Pregnant. Might be mine. What if it isn't? Might be. We don't have much choice. Have to wait and see. Oh, Bob. Baby will still be half you. You'd even consider bringing it home? If that's what you want. Baby. I hate to think that he's still inside me. Growing. It's a baby chair. That's all it is. Test about. That's what I want to know. Not like this is Mississippi. You stay in Roxbury, no one's gonna give him any trouble. They don't want to stay in Roxbury. They don't want to come here and do our girls. Yeah. Like that Sammy Davis Jr. Can you imagine that Swedish girl having his baby? Imagine a colored insider. Hey, can your father match you? I'm so sick to my stomach. It's just a baby. That's all it is. You haven't seen a doctor at all for this pregnancy? I have two children already. I know how it's done. Hmm? I've been nervous. <sighs> this might not be my husband's baby. Oh? <sighs> uh -huh. I was raped by a Negro. Now well, that changes things quite a bit. We'll know right away, won't we? Not likely. It could be hard to tell the race of a newborn. Especially a mulatto. I'll send the social worker in to see you. I imagine you want to start making plans to get the baby up. No, we haven't decided. I mean, if it turns out to be colored. We haven't decided. And how are you going to feel every time someone asks you about the father of this child? I... I don't know. I'll send the social worker in. This will be a lot easier if you don't get attached. Doctor, I tried not to. Believe me, I tried not to. In the beginning, I prayed to God that one of us would die. But eight months is too long to close your heart against the piece of yourself living right inside you. Too late to say don't get attached now. Your brother Gerald says she's a beautiful child. Have you seen her yourself? <laughs> Have I seen her? I gave her my Milky Way. The first Milky Way, and she's a coming. She really enjoyed it. I'm just giving you the official word going home. I like the name you picked for her, too. Barbara Ann, it's a good name. Barbara Ann Cummins. <laughs> Suits her. You see her knuckles? All babies come out purple as plums. But the doctor says she's going to stay that way.
I think that she should be with people who look like her. I don't want anyone ever to be cruel to her. Okay. I told your mother we'd be coming home without the baby. I asked her to tell the others. You were too upset to ever hear it mentioned again. They'll think she's dead. I suppose that's the best way to think about it. Are you ready? Yes, father. What name have you chosen for this child? Barbara Ann. Barbara Ann Collins. Salve facti e son. Barbara Ann, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Receive the light of Christ. Be the aqua ecridiento, the temple of the terra dextero. Alleluia, alleluia. Mrs. Burrell? Yes. Her name's Barbara Ann. I made it. When she's adopted, will they let her take it with her? Probably. I don't have clothes to spare. Can I call? I'm pretty sure social service has told you the rules. I suppose you're used to this, but we're not. She'll be fine. She'll be fine here. I have no lock of hair, no bracelet, no pictures, none of the things you get, even when your baby dies. So it's hard for me to remember. Guess I wasn't supposed to remember. But I did. Every single day. You sure you want to do this? Yeah. You shake? I gotta get over that now, don't I? I can't be blaming every colored man for what one did. She's over two now. Two and three quarters, almost three. You think we can go by there after? It's not so far. That was just foster care. She must have been adopted away a long time ago. Maybe they know how or where she is. Yeah. Bob is gone. Let it be.
Married people have secrets. Bob and I had one. His name was Barbara. We shared it for 24 years. We didn't talk about it much after a while. When Martin Luther King was murdered, we figured, what was the point? We were the enemy. We killed him. I didn't think Barbara would ever want to know us. Ghetto? Well, you say ghetto to some people and they think... Well, I don't have to tell you what you think and do I? But it wasn't like that when you lived inside. We had our doctors and lawyers, churches, businesses. We had community. A good place to raise up children. And that's just what I made it my business to do. First my own, and then the abandoned ones. I raised them up decent, God-fearing, wanted. Then the world came in. the window. Close the curtain. Bob, you okay? But you're holding on to Scotty so tightly, you're gonna cut off his circulation. Mom, I'm scared. Stevie, Stevie, come over here. And Scotty, I want you to sit right over there. Good. Now you come on, Barbara and Sally. Allie and you sit right here. I want you to hold Tracy right there. And then I'll hold on to you. You see, we have nothing to be scared of. We're all here together. What's going on outside of our window? Everyone else needs a TV to see. I want it to stop. Sometimes you have to mark great trouble with great outcry. He's dead. We never even saw him. I think Dr. King has found a far better home than he had here. I don't think there's any better home than this, Ma. You're right. You are right. We are very blessed. Every time I feel the spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Every time I feel the spirit Again, Mommy? Yeah. I think they're gonna take the Larry. Why can't we keep him? Oh, hon. We gave him a home when he had need of it. If he doesn't need us anymore, there'll be others that will. Now, come on, let's try out this birthday bike. How about a race? All right. Yeah? On your mark, get ready, set, go! He said my legs were just as long as his when he used to. Oh, ride. well, you certainly do have long legs. Did my daddy have long legs? I'm sure he did. But you don't know? Uh, no, ma'am, I don't. What about Stevie's daddy and Roger's? Well, I was married to him. Of course I know what kind of legs he had. Why am I Cummins and you're all Burrells? Papa, who's been talking to you? This boy at my school. He said you couldn't be my mama, because you and me don't have the same name. You and I. Are you my mommy? Yes, I'm your mommy. I have been your whole life. You didn't come out of my body, and you don't have my last name. But I'm still your mommy, and you're still my baby. 
Am I gonna be here forever? <laughs> well, you grow up, you get married. I believe you'll want a home of your own. No, I won't. I want to stay here with you. Well, as far as I'm concerned, you can stay here as long as you like. Good. Do you know what my name is? <gasps> oh, oh, I suppose you've changed it. The last time. You promise? Yeah. Okay, let me hear it. Barbara Ann Cummins. Sally Alley, Susie Doozy, light bulb traffic. Well, that's a fine name, baby. And I'm not a baby anymore. Today, I'm seven. Well, that's seven precious years you've been mine. Oh, Mrs. Burrell? Yes? Yeah, I'm Mrs. Marsden from Social Services. Oh! Come on in. Well, I hope you're not bringing me another baby. No. <laughs> I have three, you know. Yes. Well, no, actually, I have great news. We found a home for Barbara. Barbara? Yes, uh, Barbara Ann Cummins. Well, she's been here a long time. Barbara's awful old, you know. I know she's almost eight. But we were so fortunate in finding a family that specifically requested a female unadoptable. There's nothing unadoptable about her. You just forgot about her. That's all you did. Well, I'm afraid I have to agree. Her previous worker left this case in a total shambles. Now, when does the little one get back from school? About four. I have in that Medco busing program. They bus her clear out to Concord. Her teachers recommended it. She's very bright, you know. I send her along with my son, Stevie. I don't distinguish between Barbara and my own children. Well, that's why you're one of our favorite homes. Of course, we do pay you to take care of her. Between the babies, Scotty, and Tracy, they more than eat that up. Look, Miss Marsden, I'll give it up. Her share, whatever. Just please don't take it from me. Corinne, we're trying to get this child out of Roxbury. Roxbury is what she knows. Oh, well, she could know more. Ah, this must be Barbara now. Hi, Mom. Hi, baby. You know, you look just like your picture. You have a picture of me? Well, not with me, but I do have another picture. It's of a family who would very much like you to come and see them. Everyone else comes here. These people too get to come to my house? Oh, well, they live in Wisconsin. That's clear across the country. Mm-hmm. Now, this is the family. Would you like to take a look at them? No, ma'am. Aw. Well, Corinne has so many children. I mean, these people have none. Well, why don't you get one of those babies? We have plenty of them. You know, why don't you go and get some milk and cookies in the kitchen? I don't believe you. They're white? You're gonna take her from me and send her a thousand miles away to white folk? Corinne, you're making this far more upsetting than it needs to be. What if I adopt her? What about that? You're a divorced woman on a limited income. Which comes, I might add, entirely from us. I love her. Doesn't that mean anything? They would love her, too. But I can see that you are too distressed to discuss this rationally. I'll be picking up Barbara on Thursday. Please make sure that she's ready. Thursday? That's right, Miss Marston. Thursday. Uncle Ren. What did she say? Well, she says to me, you already have two children, so why would you want another? And I tell her the truth, to keep Barbara and the family. Mm -hmm. She says that wasn't a good enough reason, so I ask her, what would be a good enough reason? She tells me somebody who would be willing to make a home for this child. Mm -hmm. As far as I can see, Barbara already has a good home. I just try to make sure she can keep it. She jumped on that one like a shock. So you admit it, she would be staying with Miss Morell and not in your home. I'm sorry, Corrine, I did try. I know you did. I know you did. What if I run away? What if I don't go? I don't want to go. I don't want you to go either. This is just an end of a part of the story. But you have a whole new bright beginning starting. Oh, I want to be sure that I packed everything that you want to take. I want to 
aren't you, Mama? I want you to. Where's Barbara Ann? Uh, I hope she's packed. You know what Mr. Cummins said to me that morning they brought her here? He said, I suppose you're used to this, we're not. I'm sorry I was so cold. She's grieving. She wouldn't even go to the goodbye party they gave at school. She's a child. She'll adjust. You get snatched away from your mama when you were seven and a half, Miss Marston? That's irrelevant. Any colored woman marched into your house, grabbed you up, and sent you off to some colored family in Memphis? Milwaukee isn't Boston, OK? And you seem to forget that this child is half white. Half doesn't count in this world. In the eyes of you people, that is just one more little colored girl. No, why don't you just let her be? Because it's my job to get her on a plane to Milwaukee, and that's what I intend to do. to take this with you um i think maybe we ought to leave that here okay i just wanted to have something to remember us by this it's moment. not a good idea it will make her more comfortable if she takes it no no just give it to me dear okay. leave just give it just here, oh. here. Come no on. we gotta get out of here we no don't play. don't don't let her go let her go not like this not like this don't give her a break in a piece of oh, just let her go Are you? Barbara Ann Cummins. Sally, Alley, Susie, Doozy, light bulb traffic. And I love everything you are. They killed Barbara the day they took her from me. They killed her and I mourned her just like she died. Later, social services called me and said, Barbara had got to where she was going and she was happy. Well, she left here. But I really think she never got anywhere else. I was Barbara's mother. That's how I saw it. Adopted child, adopted mother. Black, white. I didn't think it should make any difference. My husband and I had already decided that this wasn't a world we wanted to bring a baby into. But I thought that maybe we could make a home for a child who was already here. A child who slipped through the cracks. I guess I was wrong. But at least we tried. So we had to send all the way to Brooklyn for this? You don't like it? Look, whatever we give her, it's going to be better than what she had. This girl spent more time in foster care than I did in grad school. 
I just hope we're not getting in over our heads. Well, I've organized on Skid Row, protested at the missile sites, been gassed, mugged. Trampled, OK. So one of us is a tough broad. And I want her so much. <sighs> yeah, but if you have a coronary, that just leaves me. Come on, you're excited. I don't know. OK, I'll, I'll acknowledge a slight tingle. But then that walk from the car was so long, I could be frostbite. There she is. Is that her? Paul, is that her? I don't, yeah, it could be. Give me the doll. Barbara? Hi, Barbara. I'm Annalise. Thank you. I'm so happy that you came to live with us. I brought you this. And this is Paul. Bye, Brian. You, uh, you want to come with me and get your suitcase? We're going home now. It's going to be your home forever. You'll see. Everything's going to be fine. That didn't go so bad. She seemed to like her presence. Paul, do you think it's going to be OK? She seemed happy enough to me. She didn't complain. That's different. It is? Yeah. Oh. How can you tell? Just know. Must be girl stuff. Are you sorry we didn't ask for a boy? No, not at all. A girl should be um, easier to handle. Handle? Is that what you think we have to do? <laughs> Don't be naive, Ann. They told us the older the child, the more the damage. We have no idea where that girl's been. You have any homework? Already done. Still like your school OK? Oh, yeah. It's great. You know, you can invite your friends from school over here anytime you want. OK. Barbara, did anyone ever tell you about your mother? Before me, I mean. Corinne? No, before Corinne. She was white. That's why they thought you'd be OK here. You can play with anyone. You're half white. Which half? I think we should move. I think we should move across town. What for? I like it here. It's close to work. I can walk to the lab. You're the one who said the schools were the best in the city. I think Barbara should occasionally see people who look like her, besides the garbage man. Ouch. It's true. Well, she's a kid. We're going to change our whole lives because of an eight-year-old? She's our eight-year-old, Paul. And for that, i got to move all the way over to the other side of town, become a commuter. She doesn't have a single friend. She's unhappy. Yeah, well, you know, I'm not so happy myself. I thought we had an arrangement. I'm going to build buildings, and you're going to build the great society. We each live our own lives. I believe in what you do, Anne. I work as hard as I do so that you can do whatever it is you want to do. But this, it's leaking, taking over. It's taking over everything. She's your daughter. You adopted her. You gave her your name. This 
way out to the truck in front. Do you want to get out and play? Just about done. You're not staying, are you? No. I asked you to make a choice, and you did. We made a commitment to her. I don't see where I had an option. Yeah, well, I guess I do. I did some figuring. I can cover some of the expenses here, but not all. Welcome to the real world. What's an Oreo, Daddy? It's a cookie. It's chocolate on the outside and vanilla cream inside. Bye, Barbara Ann. Daddy's left, Barb. But we're gonna be okay. We're gonna be fine. This had nothing to do with you. It's real important to me that you understand that. Do you understand that, Barbara? I'm gonna have to get a job. And I think I'm gonna have to go to business school in the evening. Learn how to do what I do and still support us. I won't be able to be with you so much. But now you're making friends, you won't even miss me. Okay. Bart, I'll go to class. Dinner's in the oven. Okay. We'll be back too late. Okay. Mrs. Lewis is right next door if you get scared. If you need anything. Okay. You gonna come give me a kiss goodnight? I'm gluing my molecules. Don't forget to turn the lights out. Okay. Love you, Barb. Love you too. Maybe this weekend we can do something fun. Have a cookout or something. Okay. Barbara, I'm leaving now. See you in the morning. Okay. Don't let anyone in. Okay. Don't go to bed too late. You need your rest. Okay. Barb, it's Molly. 
I just got into DC. I was hoping to catch you, but I guess you left for school already. Hope you have a good day. Hi, Barb. It's Ma. Should you be home already? I'm not nervous or anything, but have you heard from any of those colleges yet? I spent the whole day locked up with lobbyists. All I saw was the Lincoln Memorial from a window. Or, if you're staying with a friend, would you please call the hotel and let me know it? Barbara, where the hell are you? Barbara. Barbara, are you okay? Hi, Mom. Who was that man? What man? A man just jumped out your window. That's my boyfriend, Don. Well, I don't want him in this house. Not if I'm not here. Okay. Barbara, I have been sitting in a hotel room going out of my mind. You should have called me. Okay. I'm trying to talk to you. Don't just say okay. Yes, ma'am. Don't call me ma'am. I'm your mother. Corinne used to say that. Yes, ma'am. You can go outside to play now. Remember that. Starting to remember a lot. I thought you never forgot. You don't have to worry about Don coming back. Barbara. I gotta go, Mom. Washington, hi. This is Annalise Jorgensen, Barbara Jorgensen's mother. She didn't come home last night, and I was wondering if she's at school. I didn't want to cause her any trouble. I just wondered if she's there. No, I sent her home. I'm sorry to be the one to have to tell you, but she refuses to. She's pregnant, four months pregnant. I thought you ought to know. Thank you. Barbara? What are we going to do? I'm moving in with Don's sister. Could we discuss this? Discuss what? Giving it away? What about the baby? Have you considered what's best for the baby? I've never stop considering that. She didn't believe that. I loved her very much. I would have done anything, anything to make her happy. Until very near the end, I thought we were doing fine. Not perfect. I'd stopped expecting perfection a long time ago. What I don't know is uh, that I stopped too late. Or too soon. Still waters run deep. That's what Don says. Sometimes I feel like inside me is an ocean full of those words I never could speak. So, I've got to speak them now. Even if that means backing up a little. That day she first dropped me off. I did run out onto that street full of hope and excitement. Then white kids called me nigger. I'd never heard that before. You see, in the suburbs, I'd been a novelty. I had no friends, but people were polite to me. And now I was just one more black kid. <laughs> Except to the black kids. <laughs> They'd seen Annalise. They called me Oreo. They ran away from me. From the time I was seven, until I was 16. I didn't have a single playmate, a single person to talk to. Hey, girl! Come here! Thank 
Hold up. You want to sing? I sit behind your math class, Dan Williams. Yeah, I done. You like us? Yeah. Stick around if you want. No, that's okay. No, stick around. I'll walk you home when we're finished. If there's one thing I can't stand, it's a Gabby woman. Those magazines girls read, they always say, ask the man about himself. How do you know that? It's a start. I got a bunch of sisters. Got a bunch of girlfriends, too, I bet. I've had a few. So why'd you yell to me in church? I yelled in church? I don't think that's going to look too good on my record. You spoke loudly. That's because you never speak at all. A woman of mystery. No. What do you want me to say? Well, the answer to that inverse problem we got for homework, that would be a big help. <laughs> I notice you get pretty good grades by yourself. You notice me? Yeah. What do you notice? Well, people like you. Do you? Why? Yeah. <laughs> Why? Big football star singing in church. One I do for my father, the other for my mother. Guess which? You want to go get an ice cream? What do you do for you? Walk pretty girls home. <laughs> hey, are you going to come watch the football game tonight? Watch me be a hero? I can see the goosebumps. Why do you always do that? Do what? All right, I see you're not going to make this easy for me. Your letter jacket? Yeah. You going to wear it? That's why we came? Well, partly. Partly because I wanted you to see this place. I usually come here by myself. Sitting up here, I feel like I can see my dreams just sitting out there waiting for me to reach them. You got dreams, Barbara? They have anything to do with me? Yeah. Until I met you, I didn't believe there was any reason to dream. I thought that dreams were just little kid things. I haven't been a little kid since I was seven and a half. You can be a little kid with me. Mm, yeah, I know. You know what flashed into my mind that minute I saw you that day, when you were singing in the church, just like my mom in Boston used to? I think I would look kind of cute if you didn't have those glasses on. <laughs> no. Finally, I'm going to get home. She's not here. She didn't come. Oh, got my family now. 
Yeah. We got ours. Right there, Kate. Now look. What's that sound like? Motorboat. <laughs> <laughs> You're so smart. <laughs> you sure you can handle another boy? Oh, sure, whatever. Oh, can you? Listen, basically, you're just fine. Except I can't breathe. There's no question that you've got a touch of asthma. You ever had that before? Nope. Well, uh, how about your family? Rob, you got asthma? No, I mean your parents. You know, your brothers and sisters. I don't know. I was adopted. Well, you might want to think about getting your medical records. Might be a good idea. I can do that? Just uh, write into the agency that placed you. Look, about the asthma, I don't want to medicate you while you're pregnant. I found a certificate in a drawer from second grade for uh, spelling or something. Ugly as sin, but she was so proud of it, so I kept it. I don't know why. I kept lots of things that had to do with Barbara. Even with my own kids, I sometimes didn't do that. I guess I figured she needed somebody keeping hold of the old days for her. Figured someday she'd turn and look this way. No, I don't call that an O. You know what I call that? A lazy looking, laying down, peculiar kind of creation. Try one more time. Let me see. Careful. Wow. Yes, sir. Now you can go and play. <laughs> he looks just like Scotty. That's Scotty's son. And who might you be, miss? created the telephone. <laughs> oh, look at you, girl. You look good. I wanted to come see you. I wanted to sit in your kitchen. Oh, well, the kitchen's not out here. Come on, let's go inside. Your school certificates, remember those? Oh, yeah, from deportment. They still have deportment? I don't know. Not that I can tell the way these kids are behaving today. <laughs> you were the happiest little girl. And you were so thoughtful, too. Oh, do you remember that time I, I hurt my knee and you came running to kiss and make it better? My little Florence Nightingale. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> You didn't get it fixed? Well, it wasn't mine to fix. I saved it for you. You take it, make it whole again. What's the matter, Bob? You don't think that I, I wanted them to take you away, do you? No. Good. But you know, that's how kids are today. They just think Grown-ups can move mountains. But you know, sometimes you just have to take your mountain and stand on it. But you'll see with two boys and one on the way. Stand up. Just stand up. Mm-hmm. You know, you're carrying low. I believe it's gonna be a girl this time. A girl? <laughs> My doctor asked me if I had asthma. I couldn't tell him. I don't know if I've had the measles. I don't know if there's cancer in my family. I don't know anything. Well, I can tell you one thing. You are more than a bunch of diseases. You are Barbara, Anne, Cummins, Burrell. Now, what's that Mary name? Williams. Williams. Sally, Alley, Susie, Boosie, <laughs> light bulb, traffic. And that's just fine. Yeah. But I need to know more. 
It's okay for me to know more, right? As long as knowing more doesn't open a can of worms that hurt you later. Adoption file 54542. Child's name, Barbara Ann. Cause for surrender, colored child, white mother. The mother states that while returning home from the village. I know things now that I didn't know for a long time. I'm still not sure how they're supposed to make me feel. My father's a rapist. If I believe my mother. If I don't, my mother's a liar. I look in the mirror, who do I see? So when the kids were grown, we moved down to Florida. I make frequent visits back and forth to see the kids. And then on one of those visits, I was flying back to Orlando. And I was waiting at the airport for Bob to pick me up. Went to the baggage terminal, waited and waited. Went to the gate, waited. He never showed up. And then they announced my name over the loudspeaker. You never know what's coming out of those darn things <laughs> till they call your name. Then you know. There was a policeman there. He told me Bob had had a heart attack, crashed the car, and died. He had a Milky Way in his pocket and one of his silly jokes on his lips, ready to tell me, I'm sure. And his secret, our secret, in his heart. Now I had our secret all alone. Oasis are us. You OK, Jer? Yeah, sure. What are you doing with that palm tree? I bought it for you. I, I thought you might get homesick for coconuts. How can I get homesick? You're right next door. Well, I'm not a coconut, and I'm not Bob. I'm just your twin brother, but I'll do my best, Jer. You already have. I just don't want to hear what you said to Mrs. Flaherty to get her to move out of here. Uh, maybe I should call and get the phone switched over. Uh, how do you want to be listed? Jerry Cummins or uh, just a G there? No, use my middle name. Eileen. Yeah, Bob always told me to do that. In case he passed away. You know, this way then I could always tell if it was just some weirdo who was calling me out of the book. Bob thought of that? Yeah, he was worried. He was so much older. I always figured he'd pass away first. He didn't seem that old. Yeah. He always had a kind of a, a spring to his step, if that's the expression. Yeah. And hope in his heart. Intact black family. There are a lot of us. We just don't make the six o'clock news. Don and I have been married for 17 years. We have five kids. Four boys, one girl. They have grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins. I never had any of those. You see this girl, she's so fit. She wears these pants, I don't know, she looks so good at it. Oh, sorry. Hey, don't spoil your dinner, Quinn. How's that day? Perfect. Leave some in there for Rob, though. He likes it mushy. Mm. Kiss me again. It's all going to be mushy. Mmm. Mmm. Kids watching? It just gave us a 9.9. .9. I'm going for a 10. Daddy! Is that somebody we know? That would be your daughter, Karen. Oh, as much as I'd like to kiss your neck, I told my daughter I'd help her with a history project. What history project? She's got to make some sort of family tree. What's she going to do for my side? Oh, she said she wants to make it up. Adoption file 54542, R and G, married December 1957. Mother, high school graduate, has a twin brother. Returning home from the movies, 
raped by a Negro man. Barbara. Oh. Did you sleep at all? No. Still got us. I've got your whole family. That should be enough for me. I got my whole family too, but I still needed you. She threw me away. She carried you for nine months. That's gotta mean something. She didn't have a choice. She was Catholic. But anyway, abortion was still illegal. That whole pregnancy must have been hell. And then here, here I come, looking like the one who raped her. Well, you're gonna look like her too. I mean, that adoption file said that she cried when she gave you up, that she asked if she could visit you. She wished the circumstances would have allowed her to keep you. You think the circumstances have changed enough in 34 years to make her want me? Sweetheart, you won't know till you find her. Geraldine Cummins, maiden name nephew. My name is Barbara Williams. I'm calling from Milwaukee. Could I speak with Gerald, please? This is Gerald. Actually, I'm trying to locate your sister, Geraldine. Geraldine Cummins. Uh, what for? Uh, look, I I'm, I'm not a bill collector or anything. Um, I was adopted when I was a child, and I'm trying to find my birth mother, and I believe Geraldine could help me with that. <laughs> my, my sister doesn't know anybody in Milwaukee. Yes, she does. What did you say your name was? Barbara. Barbara Ann Williams. I'd really appreciate it if you took my number and tell her that I called. Yeah, yeah, okay. What is it? 414. Okay, thank you. I found her. I found her. I was surprisingly calm after the call. It was like, I found her. I found my mom. And if she didn't call me, it was okay. I'd done all I could. <laughs> At least that's what I told myself in the beginning. Then seven days went by. I think we got four here. But there's a couple more in the bin. Add them fast, okay? Customers coming in. Max. Oh, oh. what's the word? What's the word? Uh, Aloha. Aloha, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when'd you get back? About 16 minutes ago. How was Hawaii? Uh, I didn't go to Hawaii. I went to Oahu. It's a lot warmer there. <laughs> oh, Jeff, yeah, pull me another one of these, will you, out of there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Before I left, 
I got this strange phone call from a woman in Wisconsin. She said she was looking for you. Wisconsin? You got a name? Yeah, Williams. I don't know anybody named Williams anywhere. Yeah, that's what I told her. So? She got a first name? Yeah, Barbara. Barbara Ann. Barbara Ann. Yeah, she left her phone number and everything. Said she was looking for a mother. Okay, so why don't you give it to me, and I'll give her a call, see what it's all about. Sure. So, uh, I gotta go by work, see if they gave my job away. Uh, give me a call after you talk to her, huh? I wanna know what's going on. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure, Gerald. Barbara's back. Gerald, I need to talk to you. So what's the big news? You getting married? Yeah, right. You finally learned to drive or something? Yeah, nothing that dangerous. Want some tea? Is this about that phone call? Yeah. You know her? Yeah, I know her. She's my daughter. The baby that I saw. The baby that died. Yeah. But she didn't. Why? Now, how could you walk away from your own flesh and blood like that? My black man. You, you were raped. So she's a black girl. Yeah. What are you gonna do? She's my daughter. She's looking for her mother. I'm gonna call her. What about the kids? <sighs> Look, I think we raised them right. Anyway, I hope so. I'm sure they'll accept her. What about everybody else? The whole world's gonna know you were raped. Everybody's gonna know you were raped by a black man. I don't care. She's back. And I'm not gonna say no to her again. you make the call? You call me after. Call me after. Hello. 
Oh, yeah, hold on. Barbara. Yes. It's Boston. Hello. Barbara? Yeah? This is Jerry. I understand you're looking for me. I think you're my mother. No, I don't think so. I am your mother. You found me. I wanted to tell you that I found my mother. My birth mother. Well, I'm glad you have closure. My mom, her name is Geraldine. She cried when she gave me up. She was raped, but she still loved me. And it turns out Corinne tried to adopt me, too, but she, she was turned down by social services. They wanted me to come here. I guess you think they were wrong. Don't you? I thought you hated me. Me? Oh. Barbara, I love you. You're my daughter. The only daughter I've ever had. I mean, even after everything, you still think about me? I think about you constantly. And your baby. I have five babies now. Children. Four boys and a girl. You should come see them sometime. I love that. My grandchildren. The thing I would hate most is for people to come away from this saying, well, blacks should stay with blacks. Whites with whites. I still believe we have no hope unless we learn to talk together and not talk about race, but talk about love. You don't need a flower girl, Joe. She's already married. Mom, it's going to be fine. Do I look okay? You look great. My stomach's jumping. Ma, you want to wait in the car? I mean, we can meet her, then bring her back to you. Yeah, we'll follow the pedals. She's going to be here when she gets off that plane.
Good night, Gerald. Hey, 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 relax. Your guest. No, she's not. She's a Cummins. Ah. Better watch out. She's going to have your wallpaper in the bathroom. <laughs> I got to get home. <laughs> See you tomorrow. You following Carol? Yep, right to the door. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. So, I feel like we were doing all the talking. I've got a lot to catch up on. 34 years. Yeah. My whole life. So... How is your life? Fine. Fine. Don's terrific. The kids are terrific. I can't imagine living without them. I do this, too. I put up photographs on the wall. We have four generations on our wall. Don's side. My side's a little sparse. You can imagine. You're gonna have plenty of pictures now. Carol's collecting them. You're going to have wall-to-wall -wall comments. My Bob was a wonderful man. I wish you could have known him. But he wasn't my father. It didn't matter to him. It matters to me. My father was black. A rapist. I read the adoption file. I hate him. Don't. I forgave him the minute I saw you. Not for you, for me. He made the black part of me ugly. And I haven't had a great history with white people, so... There's no part of me I want to be. I never forgot you. I want you to know that first. I was always thinking of you. Even though I spent a lifetime trying to pretend I'd never known you. Never held you. The day I gave you away to Corinne was the worst day of my life. I cried and cried and cried. Why? You are a part of me. I loved you. You loved me. You loved me. <laughs> you loved me. Well, you loved me when I was a little pink baby. And then when I started to turn brown, you... No. No. Oh. Then, then what? Because I don't understand. No, it's not okay. No, it's not okay. I came here to love you. What does love mean? You loved me and you gave me away. I thought I was doing what was best for you. Best. If my father was white, would you have brought me home? Oh, darling, you have no idea. No, just answer, answer the question. If my father was white, would you have kept me? I don't know. Probably. Yes. But he wasn't white. He was black. And every time I looked at you, I'd be seeing him. You see him now? No. I see you. I see my daughter. I see my daughter, Barbara Ann. All I ever wanted for you was what I thought was best. I had a dream for you. A dream where you would be with people who could look into your heart. People who could show you a way to walk in this world with pride and courage. You weren't going to get any of that from me. I didn't have any courage. I was so afraid. Afraid of what? You. I 
was afraid you'd hate me. Oh, God, forgive me. I never even went looking for you when you were grown. Why? I said, they'll be looking at us, kid. 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 And all the time it was me who was looking at your skin. All I saw was the color. I never saw you. I'm so sorry, Barbara. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Mom. <laughs> My baby. I saved this. Something you made for Barbara with love. Thank you for taking such good care of my daughter. Oh, you're welcome. Yo, Ma, see what they do. Hey, Mom.